Good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee hearing. My name is Julissa Ferreras Copeland. I'm the chair of the committee. We are joined by Minority Leader Matteo, Majority Leader Van Bramer, Council Member Rosenthal, Cornegy, Rodriguez, and Levine. Today, the committee will be voting on nine items, a pre-considered intro related to a property tax exemption for veterans, proposed intro 1722A related to notifying landlords about rent reg registration requirements and financing of affordable housing, proposed intro 1673A and resolution 1421, which are both related to combating deed fraud, three pre-considered resolutions to amend and restate the property tax rates for fiscal 2018, and two land use items. Let's start with the pre-considered intro, sponsored by myself, Minority Leader Matteo, and Veterans Committee Chair Ulrich. The bill would extend the eligible funds exemption that is received by approximately 3,300 veteran homeowners to the tax portion of the property taxes. Until the mid-80s, when the city adapted the alternative veterans exemption, the eligible funds exemption was the only property tax exemption available to veterans in the city. Once the alternative veterans exemption was adopted, the city stopped granting any new eligible funds exemption. In June of this year, the council passed legislation that included the school tax portion of the property tax and the alternative veterans exemption. This pre-considered intro would bring parity between the two veterans exemptions and do the same for the eligible funds exemption. According to the Department of Finance, veterans receiving the exemption will now receive an additional estimated annual benefit of $502 on top of their current $360 benefit. I want to thank Minority Lee Matteo and Council Member Ulrich for their leadership on behalf of the city's veterans. The second item is proposed intro 1722A, sponsored by the speaker, which would require the Department of Finance to provide notice to owners of class two properties that they are required to register their rent stabilized units with the state of New York State Division of Housing and Community Renewal. In addition, DOF would have to provide them with the information regarding financing programs administered by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development to facilitate affordability. Providing owners with this information is an important step in an effort to increase and preserve affordable housing in the city, and I commend the speaker for all the work she has done and that the council has done on this issue under her leadership. Next, we will have two items related to the prevention of deed fraud proposed intro 1773, sponsored by Councilmember Rosenthal and myself, which would codify the Department of Finance's notice of recorded document system while providing us valuable data on both utilization of the program and referrals to the city sheriffs of, of suspected deed fraud. The Notice of Recorded Documents Program, which DOF first implemented in 2011, allows property owners to sign up to receive notification when documents affecting any ho and ownership interests have been recorded against their properties. Individuals receiving the notification are directed to check ACRIS and view the document for potential issues. Under this bill, going forward, DOF will automatically register property owners in the program whenever <clears throat> a deed or mortgage-related document is recorded. The bill also requires DOF to do a look back at all Class 1 and Class 2 properties and automatically register the property owner named on the most recent deed or mortgage-related document. We are also voting on Resolution 1421, sponsored by Councilmember Vallone. According to DOF, one of the most ripe targets for deed fraud are people who inherit property and do not record the deeds to the property, including their, own, their ownership. Therefore, this resolution will call upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to require all real property covenances to be mem memorial memorialized by a recorded deed. I want to thank Councilmember Rosenthal alone for their efforts in combating a critical problem faced by many of our city's most vulnerable homeowners. Next, we have three pre-considered resolutions that would amend and restate the property tax rates for fiscal 2018. Every year, as a part of the budget adoption, the Charter requires the Council to adopt property tax rates for the upcoming fiscal year. The rates we adopt are largely predetermined by a formula set forth in the state law, which involves determining the share of overall tax levy that each class is required to pay. 
State law imposes a 5% cap on the amount that each class share is allowed to grow year over year. In past years, the council has asked the state to lower that cap as a way of moderating large increases in, t in tax rates that result from this required formula. This year, we saw that without any action, the tax rate for Class 1 homeowners would have gone up by 6.5% as compared to last year's rate. Therefore, to limit the increase, the Council asked the state to pass legislation to lower the class share cap to zero, the lowest possible. The state agreed, but the legislation was enacted after the Council adopted the fiscal 2018 budget and set the tax rates. Therefore, what we are doing today is amending and restating the tax rate that we set in June to reflect the recalculation done in accordance with the new zero cap. As a result of the council's efforts, class one homeowners will save approximately $250 this year because the class one tax rate will now only go up by 2%. Finally, we have two land use items. The first is Creston Park View in Council Member Cabrera's district in the Bronx, which would provide a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to build eight, 189 units of low income rental housing. The second item is Forest Hills MHA and Council Member Kozlowitz District in Queens, which would provide a full 40-year Article 11 tax exemption to preserve 430 units of low-income rental housing. Both Council Members support these items. Are there any questions on today's items? Can anyone repeat today's items? <laughs> uh, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving holiday season with your families, and I will now ask Billy Martin, committee clerk, to call the roll. Billy Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on finance, all items are coupled. Chair Ferreris Copeland. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Van aye. Bramer. Aye. Carnegie. Aye. Levine. Aye. Rosenthal. Thank you. I vote aye and all, but uh, with uh, particular gratitude to the chair. Uh, the deed fraud bills were um, incredibly important, but you took, uh, you know, your leadership on this is making all the difference for hundreds, if not thousands, of families. And I appreciate your um, your skill set <laughs> in having us uh, vote on this today. It's uh, incredibly powerful. Thank you, Matteo. Madam Chair, may I explain my vote? Um, I want to start off by uh, thanking you once again for teaming up with myself and uh, Councilmember Eric Ulrich on, on providing tax relief for veterans. You have been such a strong advocate and partner, um, and it's been wonderful the last six months to make more headway than I think this council's ever did in terms of property uh, tax relief for veterans. So thank you. Um, I will be voting um, I and all except for the three tax Preconsidered resolutions. I'll be voting no on that. Um, while I appreciate the fact that the tax shares for Class One property owners will be marginally better than what the council passed in June, uh, I cannot support tax distribution that is fundamentally unfair to small property owners, many of whom call my district and my borough home. I know that many of my colleagues in this chamber agree, which is why Councilmember Borelli and I wrote to the mayor last week asking to fulfill his campaign promise and impanel a property tax reform commission immediately so we can ben begin the process of fixing. So with that said, um, I appreciate that it's not going to be as high, but I cannot uh, vote yes on that. So I'll be voting no on the three preconsidered resolutions and I on the rest. Rodriguez. Aye. I vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items on today's agenda have been adopted with the exceptions of the three tax resolutions, which were adopted by a vote of six in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you, and we call this meeting adjourned. Well, we needed a quorum. <laughs> he was fucking up our quorum. <laughs> Doctor, you've earned PhD. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>